Chapter 11 It took a long time for Min Lee to cut all the twine that bound the dragon. For some knots, she had to swim underwater and cut through the waving grasses. As she popped in and out of the water, cutting, she told the dragon all about her village, the goldfish, and how she had just started her journey. I'm Min Lee, she said to the dragon. What's your name? Name, the dragon asked slowly. I do not think I have a name. Everyone has a name, Min Lee said. When you were born, didn't someone give you a name? When I was born? the dragon asked, thinking hard. Yes, Min Lee said again, thinking that this dragon was very different from any dragon she had ever heard about. What did they call you when you were born? The Story of the Dragon when I was born, I remembered two voices speaking. Master, one voice said, this is magnificent. The dragon is almost alive. Add more water to the inkstone, another voice said. His voice was near my head. I felt the warm air of his breath. And speak quietly. You'll, you will wake the dragon. I'm sorry, Master, the first voice said in a more subdued tone. It is only that this painting is most amazing, even for such a skilled artist as you. This dragon painting will bring great honor to the village when we present it to the magistrate. Wasted on the magistrate, the master said under his breath so softly that only I could hear. A conceited, self-important man who, when only the imperial family is allowed to use the image of a dragon, commissions one. Now that his son is married to the king's daughter, Magistrate Tiger will do anything to flaunt his power and overstretch his authority. But this painting will buy his favor and free the village from his unfair taxes. What, master? the apprentice said. Nothing, the master said. Only that I have painted this dragon on the ground, not flying in the sky like all other dragons. Perhaps the magistrate will see how his wealth weighs him down. I doubt the magistrate will understand that meaning, master, the apprentice said. True, the master said, but the dragon should still please him. I will prepare for his visit. The painting is finished. Clean the brushes and take great care with my special inkstone. It is one of a kind, the only inkstone that was able to be made from a rock my master cut from a mountain far from here. He never told anyone which mountain, so we can never make another. Yes, master, the apprentice said, but the dragon, yes, the master said. Is it finished, the apprentice asked. You've not painted the eyes. As a painting, it is finished, the master said. Young apprentice, I still have much to teach you. And I heard the voices and footsteps fade away. It was a strange feeling. I felt the warm light of the sun running over my skin, but my arms and legs were frozen. I could hear the wind rustling leaves in the trees and birds hopping on the ground, but I saw nothing. Time passed. I only knew because the air grew colder. I heard footsteps coming toward me, many of them, so I knew it was a whole procession of people. As you requested, your magnificence, a voice said. I recognized it as the master's. May I present this, which I humbly painted in tribute to the great magistrate's rule. There was a silence as all gazed, I supposed, at me. Painter Chen, another voice said in great awe, this is indeed a great work. Thank you, magistrate, the master said. I'm glad it pleases you. Then our agreement will be fulfilled? Yes, said the voice. The village will be free from taxation for the next year, and I will take the painting. Even though I did not know exactly what was going on, I knew I did not want to belong to Magistrate Tiger. His voice had an undertone of cruelty and greed, even while he was expressing his pleasure. I tried to protest, but my still lips uttered no sound. Then I was rolled up, and all sound and feeling disappeared. I do not know how long I was rolled up, it might have been a day, or a month, or a year. All I could do was wait, but finally I was unrolled, and I felt a cold gust of air all over me. If I could have, I would have shivered. This painting is a masterpiece, a voice said in surprise. Then it quickly turned oily and flattering, as only fitting for your greatness. Yes, Magistrate Tiger said. Have it hung behind my chair. Yes, Magistrate, the voice said, and then hesitated and said, How strange. What's strange? the Magistrate asked. Well, the voice said, There are no eyes on this dragon. The painter must have forgotten. No eyes! 
the magistrate boomed. Painter Chen dared give me an unfinished painting? I will double tax for his village for the next ten years. Magistrate, a third voice said, one that seemed a little kinder. It's only a minor flaw. If we just dotted in the eyes, the dragon would be finished. Mm, yes, the magistrate said, obviously considering. Bring me a paintbrush and ink. I heard the servants shuffling and bringing the paintbrush and ink. I felt the magistrate's hot, dry breath on my nose as he came close to me and felt the cold ink touch my eye, and suddenly I could see. I saw the magistrate's fat face leering over me as he reached over and dotted in my other eye. As sight came into both my eyes, a warm feeling filled me, like drinking hot tea on a cold day. I felt strength come into my arms and hands and legs and feet, and my neck and head stretched for the first time. All the loud yells I had wanted to make now came rushing out of my mouth, and I gave a huge roar that made, made the magistrate fall over. It has come alive, I heard him gasp, and I heard the servant screaming, Dragon! It has come alive! Dragon! I knew this was my chance to free myself from Magistrate Tiger. I jumped from where I was and rushed over everyone, knocking down desks and chairs and columns. I saw the blue sky and green leaves through a window, went toward it, and simply crashed through the wall to get through. As I left, the building was falling down, and all the people were yelling, Dragon! They screamed, Dragon! I knew I had to leave as soon as possible, so I ran as fast as I could into the forest and left them far, far away. I have lived in the forest since then. So I think, the dragon said, my name is Dragon, because that's what everyone called me. Dragon, Minley repeated, and she tried not to smile. Well, I guess it's a good enough name. It will be easy for me to remember. The dragon nodded, pleased to have found himself a name. So you were born from a painting, Min Lee said. That explains why you're so different from the dragons my father told me about. Your father knew other dragons? The dragon asked eagerly. I've never seen another dragon. I always thought if I could fly, I would finally see another like me. Mm, well, Min Lee said, I don't think my father ever knew any dragons. He just told stories about them. Most people think dragons are just in stories. You're not the only dra- you are the only dragon I've ever met. Oh, the dragon said sadly, and I'm not even a real dragon. All this time, Min Lee had been cutting the twine ropes. At that very moment, Min Lee cut the last rope and rubbed the dragon's arm. You're the only dragon I've ever met in real life, she said, and you feel real to me, so I think you're a real dragon. Or at least real enough. Anyway, if we're going to the never-ending mountain together, let's at least be real friends. Yes, Dragon agreed, and they both smiled.